Before we start the proceeding, I'll request everyone to rise for ICI motto. Back end team, ICI motto, please. Thank you. Once again, uh, welcoming all of you to this program on opportunity for Indian CA in states. We at Western India Regional Council this year, we have a young dynamic chairman, Arpit. And when we were formulating and planning all this program, he said, let's have you know, the program for Indian CA, for local CAs, opportunities at each place. And since then, you know, we have been, you know, trying to organize and we organized for some program on Middle East, for the US, for Australia. And one of them is this today's program, which is opportunities for Indian CA in US. This reminds me of uh, one incident which happened recently. Uh, I'm sure many of you must have attended World Congress of Accountants, which happened in here, right here in Mumbai, in Geo. World Convention Center. Now, uh, it so happened that, you know, the Institute was trying to host this program for last almost eight, 10 years. We had earlier also requested, and uh, they said that we need a government comfort letter, which fortunately four years back, when Devendra Fadavnis was a CM, he gave that letter on the, on the day itself when we approach as Institute, saying that we can give you the comfort letter. Otherwise the earlier, Eight years back, when we had tried, the government asked us 100 questions and said that, you know, how can we give a comfort letter to World Congress of Accountants for hosting some event here where 10,000 people may gather and who will take responsibilities and whatnot, 100 questions they asked. And then that, since that letter was not given, World Congress of Accountants also said that if your government is not going to support, we cannot host such international event. Fortunately, four years back, he was CM. Now he's deputy CM. So we hosted this event, almost 10,000 people physically and virtually attended, 6,000 and odd attending virtually, 3,000 and odd attending uh, physically and virtually 3,000 and odd. And uh, uh, almost uh, people from 110 countries visited here. Uh, institute prior to this program was, you know, trying and inviting to all the uh, Institute world across. So one of them was, uh, Institute of Singapore. So Institute of Singapore, uh, now president and then vice president Anit K. Talati sir, he went for an invitation and briefed them about the program at Singapore and told, invited them to come. And also simultaneously, as in when we go there, everywhere we will request them that to have some MOUs with ICA. That's one of the, you know, protocols. So we told them that, look, uh, if we appear X exam, we have to just give one paper or two papers are exempt or one paper is to be given and a whole tie up with various institute he explained to Institute of Singapore. And uh, they said, okay, we'll look into this. And then uh, Wakao came, they came here, they visited uh, World Geo Convention Center and a lot of events were planned in this auditorium and in other, uh, you know, classrooms also smaller events were planned. So naturally each one of the office bearers were visiting here. So as you know, Singapore office wearer came here and we were all standing down. 
So uh, that lady president told to Aniket, oh, this entire building belongs to you. So Aniket was narrating this event and he said that when I went to Singapore in one of the building on sixth floor, the Institute of Singapore has got office and that also sixth floor is not fully occupied by this institute. There are some other offices also. So when uh, this lady came here, she said that, oh, this entire building belongs to you. So Aniket very humbly said that, uh, ma'am, not only this, we have such, such hundred building across India. Now the impact of this, apart from, you know, the infrastructure which we hold, the kind of event which happened, the, uh, you know, speakers which flew from across the world, the simultaneous program, the exhibition which happened of accountants, I think it was class apart. The day he took over as a president, this lady sends a mail saying that congratulating Mr. Aniket Talati for becoming, you know, president and taking over as a president of the prestigious Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. And very glad to inform you that uh, if any Indian CA who visits Singapore and stays in Singapore six months without any exam, he'll be given a degree of Institute of Singapore, of Institute of Chartered Accountants of Singapore. So this is the, you know, power of uh, ICAI. We have 167 branches across India, 44 chapter overseas, 34 representative offices. So many places, so many events are happening. And we were able to showcase in one event to entire world that where ICI is today. If we add up the student number, we are the largest body of student and members across the world. Now, opportunities. Wakao happened now. We all have witnessed the COVID time, the pandemic time. And I'm told many of the foreign companies who had, you know, work somewhere else, for example, in Philippines or somewhere else, they found that the Indian delivery was much better, much secured. And uh, there are a lot of work which has been shifted from somewhere else to India. I am told the global accounting of many big companies is happening in India. There are few big CA firm in Ahmedabad who are doing, you know, huge foreign practice. One of them is of now President Aniket Bhai, their uh, firm, Manumayan Shah. They have 1,000 plus employees who are doing outsourcing work of chartered accountants of UK, US, and many other companies' work. The conversion of you know accounts of Indian entities into the uh, foreign gaps, the IFRS. So there are various type of assignments which are flowing to Indian entities and the best part is the, as I said, we are ready to work. The mentality of Indian people is that we'll work 24 by seven. So we are able to deliver them at 2, 2 a.m. in night, at 4 a.m. in the morning, in the midnight 12 also, we are able to match with their timings and the expertise, no one can beat us. We are very good in accounts. We are very good in taxation. We are very good in the IFRS or NDS. I am told more than 2,000 professionals traveled when UAE had introduced GST. So virtually, the GST implementation in UAE was done by most of Indians. There are many more countries where these type of new laws are going to be implemented. I am told today, India is the first institute, ICI is the first institute to establish sustainability standard boards. We are first to bring the forensic accounting standards. I think the kind of development which is happening in ICAI, if we all are updated with all of this happening, I'm sure there are a lot of opportunities for members. And with that intention, we have got today's program. We have got uh, Toral Madam here. Toral Madam, really thankful to you for sparing a valuable time and coming over here. So, uh, you know, uh, only thing is now, you know, to tap these opportunities. That is part number, you know, most important part. 
first acquiring knowledge we have these type of sessions we can attend and upgrade our skills on technical part we can attend all those program where we are able to learn about the international taxation what are the tax laws over there what kind of accounting standard ifrs are being implemented over there what are the you know uh, differences between indian standard and accounting standards over there and then getting a right person over there see nowhere else uh, here also uh, gone those days that you know we are sitting at office because of our reference because of our relationship the clients are coming that may still happen in smaller practices but not in bigger practices we know how the the bigger firms or the big fours are functioning they have you know knowledge partners they have pr partners and they have dedicated people who are maintaining relationship there is a systematic you know tunnel of inquiries from there to getting work doing a regular pr meeting them updating them sh showcasing and demonstrating your knowledge to the world that is most important so here according to my you know mind the biggest barrier is to get in touch with those people who are going to get you the work so you may have you know few trips like that you may feel that kya mai abhi kya karu what i do you know when i hear them i hear what opportunities are there i may get a knowledge and the third and most important part is to get the client so to my mind you will have to definitely explore all the possibilities you will have to list out who are your friends who are in us somebody may be your relative or somebody may be in college who may be in us and try and understand them that who are the people who are your prospective client this can be ca firms this can be corporates what kind of you know accountant job profile is there in us which we will come to know through this type of sessions now post acquiring the requisite knowledge am i able to deliver them if i am able to deliver them then i have these contacts which i may build over a 6 month to 1 year to 2 year visit few time to such countries be it us be it australia be it uae be it singapore try and build up a relationship demonstrate the knowledge and i'm sure once you remain in touch you are able to you know regularly update yourself give them that update the work has to flow and that's what is happening here that's what is happening across the world and we have seen you know people getting huge assignments 15 years back we went and we did one assignment in singapore of a costing of a company which is doing making parts of boeing absolutely unexpected 15 20 years back today in the you know today's time i'm saying that you know we do this activity we may have work it so happened there was one person who was working with me here where i was working he went to uae he joined some company and he knew that i am good in costing so he said that you know when we were regularly talking then so he said that look uh, we have one company in singapore our group has got one company but they are in, actually regularly making losses and we are not able to understand how they are making losses thanks to you know uh, costing i said let us you know explore this assignment so we said that you know why not uh, we evaluate your standard costing your marginal costing and look at that so he said that you know we tried doing it giving it to a uk chartered accountant uh, this assignment but ultimately nothing had happened so i said okay we you know uh, give us some data and uh, let us attempt this give us one or two you know costing papers which that ca firm had done so he gave me you know few of them and then on that on that we worked here we gave we told them that you know these look these are the error when you have fixed up the standard costing when you have done you know this and how are you following how are you doing calculation post this they gave us a full fledged assignment i personally went there for almost 11 days we evaluated almost 59 products and we realized that there were so many errors in fixing up the standards following them working out the cost the ultimate selling price was much lower than the cost of course they as a they had a monopolistic contracts with boeing but they need to prove that their costing was you know had gone up which they were not able to make them explain in those days we had you know a sort of a video conferencing and we tried and presented them ke look the cost of this company in these components have gone much higher there were errors in the calculation trust me we never knew that what can be the charging and uh, in hindsight we thought that okay chalo assignment mil raha hai kar rahe hain and we just said them that you know we'll charge you 2 lakh rupees and he immediately said yes 
post completion of assignment and then i was talking to this my friend i said that you know chalo acha experience tha bahut kuch tha but uh, you know earning wise kuch bhi nahi hua 10 15 din gaye aaye and we just got 2 lakh rupees so ek fear tha quote karne ka fees quote karne ka there was a fear in mind and we quoted like that 2 lakh rupees he told me one story he said that you know look ketan uh, you know the i told you that we gave earlier the assignment to ukca and they did the similar assignment and now i can share that report also with you the kind of report you people gave the presentation you gave and we were able to increase the pricing with boeing actually you know the we paid to ukca 25 lakh rupees in indian term i am translating that 25 lakh rupees and you all you just charge us 2 lakh rupees so uh, the major problem is you know we are not knowing our values even locally when lot of time under pressure we do give some quotations and uh, we don't you know understand what kind of value add we are going to do to the ultimate client and how he is going to get benefited so out of this you know one learning is that you know try and think through before you give any quotations before you know you uh, start any such assignment do a good evaluation and give them a proper value add costing i have seen you know lawyers quoting very good for any of the drafting of mou one mou review uh, recently we did we thought that you know we are quoting high we quoted some 3 lakh rupees and we said that you know this jda had lot of complication and we want to review it post reviewing some 16 errors were found drafted by a solicitor from i'm not naming that we had two three round of discussion we said okay whatever two three lakh rupees we quoted we were happy that 16 errors from taxation point of view from practical point of view post that completion when i was talking to the solicitor they said we charge some 10 lakh rupees for drafting 16 galtiyan karne ka bhi 10 lakh rupees charge kar rahe hain so i think you know we all of us need to think through about uh, how do we uh, value our services uh, with this i'll uh, request uh, shuyash uh, to first introduce our uh, speaker uh, pravin jain sir uh, who is joining online and also to introduce uh, torul madam and uh, uh, pravin jain sir will be addressing uh, us online and uh, uh, also let me uh, offer a memento to torul madam uh, as a token of our uh, appreciation towards her uh, time spent in pravin sir's uh, um, memento we will be sending them by courier so i'll request uh, Ketan sir, Toral ma'am, and my dear professional colleagues, greetings. friends just to add on to what uh, ketan sir said uh, i don't know uh, all of us are aware or not but there is a huge uh, you know shortage of uh, finance and accounting professionals in us market and having said that it gives a you know great opportunity to professionals like us to you know tap the market and you know just add on a new uh, segment in our practice or in our works to guide us for the same today we have our speaker ca uh, pravin jain sir pravin sir is cpa fca and is a member of icai since 1986 he is currently serving as a chairperson of washington dc chapter of institute of chartered accountants of india and was also a special invitee to the committee for exports of ca uh, ca services and wto of icai he is the founder of seva limited cpa in colombia and the president of x uh, etex corporation usa with over four decades of experience including 22 years in us accounting tax business advisory and international taxation 
Pravin sir is a renowned speaker and has conducted numerous national level sessions for ICA on the opportunities for Indian CA in the US. He actively collaborates with the Embassy of India, Washington DC, USA to host various knowledge enhancing webinars under the umbrella of ICA. Pravin sir's expertise and commitment to his field are genuinely remarkable, making, making him an invaluable support to the industry and profession. Also, we have Torun Ma'am with us. Torun Ma'am is the director of Bernstein Roseland Company and has been working with the BRC for a decade. She specializes in corporate tax for small to medium business and individual tax. She also prepares and maintains monthly management reports, budgets, cash flow analysis, audits, reviews, and compile financial statements. In addition, she has experience preparing audits and review of cooperatives in New York and NP organizations. She offers part-time CFO services as well. She works closely with many international clients and in the last few years has been assisting with the implications of filing taxes for immigrants with visa categories O, H1, H4, J1, F1, etc. She is a board member of the International Graduate Studies, a New York-based education NPO, which primary focus in assisting, guiding, and educating foreign nationals with international accounting taxation and business knowledge. She has been an active member of Institute of Chartered Accountant of India, American Institute of CPA, New York State Society of CPA, the International Society of Female Professionals, and the Secretary of BNI Manhattan Chapter 11. She's a CA as well as CPA US. She graduated, she has also graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Auditing from Mumbai University, India, and completed a Master's of Science in Accounting from Western Governance University, US. She lives in New York and credits her success to focus, drive, and presence. With this, I request Praveen sir and Toral ma'am to uh, take the dais and okay. Friends, let's have a huge round of applause for both this valuable speakers for sparing their valuable time in coming over here. So requesting Praveen sir uh, to start off, uh, sir, over to you. Sir, I think you are on mute. Yeah, th thank you, uh, Ketan. Thank you, Suez. Uh, greetings, esteemed attendees and fellow professionals. Uh, it is an absolute privilege to hear uh, to today to speak about the opportunities that Indian chartered accountants can uh, seize in the United States. Uh, about uh, one and a half years ago, I might ha I have given an interview and even virtual seminar uh, similar to this topic. And uh, today it's my privilege uh, to just uh, overview and uh, 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 my learned fellow C. A. Toral. Uh, Gathani will cover the topics in detail and uh, thanks to her for sharing uh, such valuable insight with the audience today. Uh, I will just uh, give you the overview uh, of the what is the demand in the US and as well as uh, maybe answer the Q&A session, uh, give my insight experience of last uh, 22 years uh, in outsourcing domain. I have an office in Ajmer, uh, about 10 chartered accountants working, about 30 people are working here. To, uh, yesterday I came uh, from the US and that's why I joined uh, uh, this opportunity. Uh, I believe that Indian CAs are the some of the most talented and hardworking professional in the world. And as mentioned by Ketan Bhai, uh, rightly says uh, all about uh, amazing things we as a CA is doing across the world. And we possess the skills and expertise that are in high demand, particularly in the US market, both on-site and offshore. Uh, as rightly mentioned, uh, the Ahmedabad is the key hub of uh, US outsourcing on financial services uh, and all accounting services. And according to the data available with the ICA US chapters and represented offices, we estimate that there are more than 6,000 qualified CAs living in the, in the US. While uh, interesting is that around 2000 plus moved to the US in a very short couple of uh, years of time. It is clear that these profession are highly sought and after valued in the business world. 
the accounting industry is constantly evolving and the global market is becoming increasingly connected. As per the AICPA, 75% of CPA reached retirement age in 2020. So U.S. Bureau of Labor Studies mentioned that about 136,000 uh, openings for accountants and auditors are projected each year or on average over the decade. So looking to that gap, uh, Indian CA possesses a unique advantage in this ever-changing landscape with a strong foundation in financial and accounting principle, principles and a deep understanding of Indian business practices Indian CA are well equipped to thrive in this US market. One of the primary opportunities for Indian CA is, as mentioned uh, by Ketan Bhai, is the area of international tax planning. As business countries to expand globally, the demand for tax experts who can navigate complex cross border uh, tax issues is growing. Uh, India and US is a uh, democratic country and becoming a partner. Uh, earlier uh, in 50s, 70s, uh, Japan was the main uh, favorable country to the US and you can find every item was made of, made in China, uh, sorry, made in Japan till 70s and 80s and then uh, China becomes the manufacturing of the US and after uh, Y2K, India is becoming the uh, IT sector's uh, hub and now as in last five, 10 years, 10, 15 years, the accounting and other financial services and every services is growing uh, tremendously. So as the Indian CA possesses a unique perspective on these issues uh, of the uh, uh, international taxation, we can become familiar of both the Indians and US systems every day uh, many of, like I estimate uh, about 100,000 uh, CAs. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, eight lakh, this is, what in India, is working in India from big four. Many US companies are having offices here uh, in Bombay, Hyderabad, uh, Bangalore, Chennai, and Ahmedabad, Baroda, Surat. So these are already there. Small set, uh, small CA firms uh, or CPA firms are also is there. So these uh, another opportunity of the audit and assurance, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we as an Indian uh, CAs are registered in uh, uh, what, what is called uh, the one audit uh, association in the US and they are auditing the listed company of the uh, US company, Indian Chartered Accountant. So there is a myth that only CPAs are allowed to do the audit. That is true for banking and any other reason, but listed companies are required to member of, uh, I just missed that uh, term, uh, the association, which is in the New York base. And many of uh, our State Bank of India auditor or ICI auditor is required to be registered there. So they are already there. And then a couple of listed companies are audited by the Indian CA firms. So the auditing can done by listed companies from here, but other regulatory you need to do have a CPA requirement. Uh, another area of the uh, Indian CA is uh, understanding of accounting and auditing principle, as I mentioned. We are also doing the financial analysis uh, due to the uh, financial uh, financial mess is happened due to the uh, recently bank. So we as a financial analysis, uh, hard work is also coming to the Bombay. Uh, and as business become more complex and need for financial advice, increasing Indian CAs are investigating their knowledge of business practices to provide valuable insight to the US businesses, whether it is ad advising on merger acquisition strategies or providing guidance or risk management, CA possession, possess the necessary skills and expertise to succeed in the field. The next chapter, uh, boom, I was just uh, 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 visualized that is many chartered accountants firm will open the offices in the US. There are some technical issues are uh, there, but many CAs are buying the CPA firms in USA 
uh, in India uh, is we are not very few CF funds are selling, but in United States, you can pick any city, you will find one or two CPF funds is available for sale. So it's very common in United States uh, to buy the CPF funds. And uh, like I got uh, about three years ago, this ETEX Corporation. Uh, so it's very easy to buy there and you can run that uh, firm even from the India also. So the opportunity for CA in the US are vast and diverse. By leveraging this unique skills, knowledge of it uh, as a CA can build successful career in the global economy also. I encourage all Indian CA to explore the possibility that US has to offer and to take advantage of the incredible opportunity that awaits them. Uh, let us start the session and uh, thank you WRC executive team and uh, over to Suesh and Toral. Thank you. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure you'll uh, stay with us and uh, post uh, Toral session. Uh, we may have, you know, the audience may have some questions for you and uh, we'll you know pass it on to you sure sure yeah thank you thank you over to you Thural, ma'am now thank you everyone and good morning to my fellow chartered accountants here it is a privilege to be standing here and speaking in front of everyone today um the first thing about today that I would really like to mention is thank you for thank you ICAI for this wonderful opportunity. And it feels like a nostalgia to be here visiting the ICAI office after 10 years. I've been in US for the last 10 years. So it's it's a privilege, it's an honor. I have mixed emotions of happiness and feeling of like what I have missed in the past 10 years working in the US focusing on my career, trying to gather knowledge of like, all right, I did my CA, I did my CPA, how can I now, after a decade of working in the US, now is the time when you feel of like, all right, let's give back to the society from where we started. And this is where I started. CA was my first dream to becoming a chartered accountant. So that is where I wanted to start with when I started giving, of thinking about giving back to the society, let's share the knowledge and experience that I have gained over the years. So I wanted to start with opportunities for CAs in India, which is a huge market right now, as Praveen sir said. I have like, my session is gonna be a little interactive. So I would appreciate if the audience could also answer some of the questions. Um, first thing about CAs is like Praveen sir mentioned, right? You wanna focus and find your niche, whether you want to work in banking industry, you want to work in audit. In audit, whether you, you want to be an internal auditor, you want to be an external auditor. What is your area of expertise? Do you want to only focus on taxation? Even in taxation, do you only want to focus on business taxes or individual taxes, or you want to do both? Or do you want to focus on banking industry? Even in banking industry, there is like different opportunities, right? Whether you want to do trading or you want to be working in the back end of just investments and focusing on how the investments work. Or you want to even becoming after becoming a CPA, you could be a financial advisor or a financial planner. Or do you only want to fo focus on tax planning for people? Even in tax planning, whether you want to do tax planning only for individuals, high net worth individuals, or you want to focus on corporate tax planning. What is your niche? Like, what do you see yourself doing? The other area is also accounting. Do you want to do bookkeeping? In bookkeeping, do you want to do bookkeeping for individuals? There are a lot of high net worth individuals who have their own bookkeepers. They do their monthly bookkeeping to maintain their books, to maintain all of their bank accounts, to maintain all of their investment accounts. So do you want to focus on that? Or do you want to focus on bookkeeping for corporations? Like you have to figure out when you start talking about opportunities in US, right? You want to first find your niche of which area do you want to serve? What's your forte? What are you looking to do? Like, where do you see yourself serving? What industry do you see yourself serving? So if I may please ask someone from the audience, whoever wants to answer, like, where do you see yourself and why? If anybody can answer, just a simple question based on all the different fields that I just mentioned. Go ahead.
And then what's the IT person says, no, it's not that. So then what is the challenge that you see or facing yourself? Or what's your expectation for the future? You cannot uh, even uh, be very vocal about this, trying to work for the biggest sound, very scary thing. And second, sounds very uncomfortable because you are tired of it. Yeah. 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 If you want to talk about yourself, right? Like I asked a question. So the purpose of doing this was, how can you explain yourself or your expertise or what work area you work in, right? In 30 seconds. If somebody gives you, right? A client is going to give you 30 seconds of explain yourself and your work. So what would you say? If I give you 30 seconds, like what's your area of expertise and how would you serve? I have an XYZ corporation. It's a manufacturing corporation. How can I utilize your services? Okay. That opens a big gamut of uh, ideas as to how I can really serve because I can uh, also work as their extended fp and partner. I can work as their financial reporting or bookkeeping partner. Uh, I can even work as uh, in case uh, they do their own tax prep instead of outsourcing it to a CPA, then I can be their extended tax department. So these are the three things that I think I can serve a manufacturing entity for. My niche would be different. I am, I'm kind of tapping into service industry mode. Uh, small businesses service sector. This is broadly my uh, targeted niche at the moment. But even for manufacturing, I can uh, provide these three services from the top of my head. Okay, so there you go. So right, like that's the first step. Like when you are working in the US. So my challenge in the first six months was how do I let the client know of what I know? Absolutely. So that's that's when I started because within the first six months, my bosses were like, all right, you are going to go visit the client. You have to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I actually used QuickBooks, which is equivalent to Tally here. So I'm sitting at the client's office. The client is expecting me to know how to use QuickBooks and run reports for them and read the reports and talk to them about it. Okay. So you have... 30 minutes to prepare yourself, go through the reports and talk to them. So that's why when you prepare your niche, right? So that's why the first thing to focus for any accountant, because for an accountant, there's like 100 different opportunities that you can tap into, like you said, right? I give you an example of manufacturing industry, but your focus is on service industry. So even like there are so many different industries that you can focus on. Mm -hmm. So once you find your niche, then based on that, you can focus on what's services they would need, how they would need, how you can provide it. Once you answer those questions, right? How, what, why, when, you have a one-liner to answer all of those questions. Then when you talk to anybody, you just have that one minute pitch of, this is what I can offer you. This is how I can offer you. This is how I can take it forward for you. These are your challenges. The client might also say, these are my challenges. How can you help? So based on your how, what, why, when, if you have those answers ready, then you can just divert those questions and those answers into what the client is facing and then serve them. Okay, cool. Can I ask one question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I've been hearing that, uh, you know, with to, uh, tools like Loom and, uh, you know, uh, really taking off in USA, do you feel that it is uh, an added advantage if I could make a video presentation vis-a-vis -a, -vis a, a still presentation in PPT, for example? Uh, so that would depend on what market you are targeting, what industry you are targeting, whether the client is interested or not. So I have like, I have a few clients who are not interested in looking at any presentation that I make for them. And some clients only look at presentation. So it's an added advantage to have a backup ready of like you have a presentation ready. Once you start talking to the client, you give your pitch, the client is impressed. You can say, I have a presentation to show you. Okay. And then 
and they say yes and you share it to them. Oh, thank you. No problem. Let's ask one more person, somebody who is other than bookkeeping. Who wants to tap into taxation? I think we have one person and then we can come to you. Uh, I was looking for corporate international taxation uh, like in USA. Uh, so I was looking to work in a multinational company uh, for which I want to work. I don't just want to work for a company in a USA in particular. So I was focusing on multinational company rather than just a US company. So when you say you want to work in multinational company, do you want to be an in-house tax person or do you want to work in a multinational accounting firm? Multinational accounting firm I would like to work with. And then when you say international taxation, like what is your focus? Only corporate taxation for different countries? Uh, no, not uh, only corporate taxation because uh, when I do corporate taxation, uh, the other things also comes uh, hand in hand. Like uh, there are a different tax structure uh, than what we have in India. Uh, that's what I have heard. I, I don't have uh, more knowledge about it. But uh, as heard, they have a different tax uh, like uh, for every uh, particular topic. Like we have uh, five heads in our uh, taxation. Uh, so they have a uh, different taxation for everything. Uh, so they have different tax laws for each of the heads or something like that. So I thought uh, that is interesting to work with that. So different heads is like, say, I'll give an example of US tax system, right? Like oh. when you file taxes in India, there's just one tax return that you file, which is with the income tax department. Right. But if you are in US, you are filing tax return with IRS then you're filing a tax return with the state that you live in. Okay. And depending on which state you live in, there are city taxes that you have to file. And then even with the city tax, it would depend whether you are a resident of that city or you are a non-resident. So there's like different levels of taxation. There's no indirect taxation in US like you have in India. Yes. So you start with those taxes, right? So first, I think instead of just focusing on like all the countries at once, try one country, get that knowledge, and then see which other countries you can use that. Okay. If you start from that, like once you have one international country, right? One country outside of India, that will help you to understand how the international taxation works, like any country, whichever country you feel comfortable with, whether it is UK, US, Australia, start with one, see how it works that works in that country that will give you an exposure of how the international market works. And then from there, you can start with the different countries. Because if you start with all the countries at once, then you are going to be, you'll land nowhere. Yes, so too many uh, things. Yeah, it will be too many things to learn because everything is different. Starting from how they keep books or what kind of questions they ask to how you have to file the tax return or tax planning. The tax season is different in India versus US or any other country. Yeah. So start with one country, you have that knowledge, do a few years, gather experience and then switch to another country. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And then we had one more question, the last question, and then we'll move on. ahead. Hello, Tor. Uh, myself, CA Hardik Boa. So one area of expertise where I'm looking to Ghana, uh, basically is my experience uh, of working with Big Four and auditing large listed clients. So one of the areas where I'm looking to focus is uh, regarding preparation of financial statements. So uh, I am very much involved in the practice of India's preparation of India's financial statement. <laughs> and I understand that many companies, be it a small size or mid-size companies, they are looking to list themselves in US market. So they're in preparation of financials. It's an, again, a big opportunity, which is the areas where I'm looking to focus on. So this is the nice or the specific market which I want to address. So you want, so basically your niche is going to be focusing on companies that are looking to list themselves in the New York stock. Yeah, so preparation of financials is something which is my core or my domain. Uh, I have been doing this across here. I have helped many companies or corporates transition from IGAP to Indus. So that's my core uh, domain, yeah. So for US, you still have to follow US GAAP. Yes, GAAP, yeah, yeah. So once you study US GAAP, right, then that will help you prepare the financial statements. The financial statement itself is easy, but the documentation is very large. Like you have to put in like hours and hours of work, make sure everything is listed and correct. 
and there are special courses as well available for that so maybe you want to tap into and look into one of those courses which i was going to talk next about okay uh, thanks i'll eagerly wait for that thank you um so once you find your niche right like he said he wants to only focus on financial statements or like this gentleman here said he wants to focus on bookkeeping so there are certain certifications available just for that whether you want to do internal auditing you want to do financial planning you might want to look into getting one of the certificates that might help you for like say for instance for bookkeeping you want to learn quickbooks so quickbooks gives you the pro advisor status you learn that and then when you present those additional certifications along with your qualifications that is one of the things that a lot of clients in us are looking for whether you have that added qualification whether you have that added certificate that will help us so it could be anything even if like you know you do a small two month course or a three month course that's what they look into of like all right you have two chartered accountants sitting next to each other one with 25 years of experience one with 10 years of experience but the person with 10 years of experience has that additional certificate it will give him an advantage that additional certificate that qualifies of your niche is what people are looking for 10 years ago when i decided to do cpa it wasn't the same it was just like you do your cpa all right i have my cpa i can start working with an accounting firm 10 years later now when i see and i talk to people i talk to friends i'm talking to a lot of clients the things are like complete 360 when sometimes i also surprise myself of what kind of questions these people are asking me whether i have this certificate whether i have that certificate but my experience speaks for it but currently like now if i were to apply for a job they ask for additional certificates not just experience but experience and certificate is what will help you land the job a little bit about myself a lot of my clients called me mindful accountant and why is that when you talk to your clients right they my question i have been working with a small firm bernstein rosen and company is a small firm we are 10 accountants everybody is an accountant in our office so when we talk to our clients we serve their every need whether it is bookkeeping tax returns financial statements tax planning their cash flow analysis their budgeting anything and we serve a wide variety of work accountants from every field and every industry so it's not just focusing on one thing of like all right i only want to focus on service industry when i started i wanted to learn a little bit of every industry so that i can find myself of this is where i want to grow or this is how i wanted to grow myself and when i've been talking to clients right when if it's a small firm you wear multiple hats it's not just you are only going to be the tax person for the client or you are only going to be the bookkeeper for the client you are with somebody like for instance you have a startup company you are going to be hand holding starting from your tax planning of your cash flow planning of your cash budgets of how you can actually plan it's a startup they have funds raised how do you help them spend x dollars in the right way if i were to ask you if there is a budget of 100000 how would you spend it for a startup company do they spend everything in marketing do they spend everything in legal fees do they spend everything in professional fees what do they do if i were to ask someone from the audience what would they do go ahead mm hmm so say you have 100000 right and then how much of it would you say you would spend in each division you want to keep a runway you want to spend something in accounting you want to spend something in governance how would you utilize them and also secure my accounting and governance and strategic planning mm -hmm. uh, then i will talk about the decision uh, my skills are more for the decision making and the balance between the Go ahead. I'll come back to you. Okay. And then. Uh, 
so it could be either or both the answers are correct so once you said with the owners of the company right we'll you will talk to them like you said you bring up the business model accounting and governance is one of the important things lawyers is one of the important things in us the first thing somebody starts a company you have a start startup the first thing is i need an accountant and i need a lawyer those two go hand in hand with the business owner and then once they start talking they know how much they are going to spend on their accounting and on their lawyers after that the balance is left of all right i have these x dollars and then the accountant will come up with all right we can spend year 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 and then we have 12 months of runway of all right 12 months we can sustain 12 months with this and then we need more funding so we also need to focus on how can we raise the funding post 12 months to sustain for the next 5 years so that is also one of the important plans of like when you do the business planning or the business development of how will you sustain once your first initial investment is up then how are you going to sustain or what's your backup plan of like say if you don't receive that there might be few months when the funding doesn't come in then how do you sustain those few months you've acquired the resources how do you pay them how do you keep the funds going how are they going to survive and sustain if you are not able to pay them so those are the things those are few things that you also would talk like you know if it's in the initial phase and you are hiring you'll hire four people say you hire three people but they would know if you are in the initial stage how you want to sustain how they will if there are three months if you foresee three months of like you are not going to be able to pay somebody how would you bring it up with them so those are little things that you want to be mindful of because being an accountant is not just all right i'm only going to look at numbers if you're talking to a client they might question you of how am i going to let everybody know if if the client doesn't have cash it's the accountant's job to bring it up you don't have cash plan a backup plan of hope like you know just either you get a loan or talk to your employees have a pay cut it's initial stage have a little pay cut and then increase it later so those are the little things of you know when you talk to your client you have to focus on everything not just one thing so either you have your forte of like you're working with a big company you have your niche you're only going to focus on that but if you also want to be like an all round accountant then you can also do like you know focus on everything little things it's not just you need to know and have a deeper dive into each area but have a knowledge where you are able to talk to your client of this is how i can serve you becoming a cpa then versus now 10 years ago you could only do cpa you had to travel to us to give your exams now you have the luxury of giving the exams from india it's become very easy and very accessible to at least be able to give the exams from here back then i remember when i traveled to us in 2010 the first time to give my cpa exams we were calculating every penny to make sure that i can stay there for 6 months give my exams and then come back because it's not like all right i'm going from mumbai to pune and then i'm going to give my exams you want to have the cash of staying there for 6 months unless you have a family with whom you can stay you you need to have the exam expenses need a backup in case if you don't pass because the passing is 75% so there were little things that you think about and now you know you are in you stay at home you are with your parents you could just go give your exam come back and you are good and back then it was just like you know i'll do cpa and i'm good i'll get a job i'll work with an accounting firm and it's easy and now after especially post pandemic the difference that i have noticed 5 years pre pandemic 3 years post pandemic everybody is looking for something special in you whether you have additional qualification you have additional certification what more can you bring to the table you are a cpa you are a ca 
a little extra is what you can bring to the table is the first thing that people are looking into whether it is an additional certificate or something whether you have that experience whether you have the knowledge that you can bring to the table or how you present yourself whether you are excellent in excel skills or presentation skills that you can bring to the table how do you present yourself in front of the client if you're sitting for an interview how are you talking to them whether you are able to if you're lying on your resume you say i have 10 years of experience you have eight years of experience are you able to cover it up if you say you are good in auditing are you able to explain the steps of auditing it could be anything but back then the questions were you have an accounting degree we are good to go and now they question you how many years did it take for you to get the accounting degree that is the difference between doing account like becoming a cpa 10 years ago my interview with my firm was literally 10 minutes they questioned me are you a ca i showed my certificate they asked me if i knew how to speak in english i said yes they asked me do you know how to read a general ledger i said yes and that was it and i was hired and now i'm in a position when i hire other people so the interview goes on for three rounds you question them you give them a test so for us like we have three rounds of interviews, even though it's a small firm. We give them, the second round is we give them some questions, bookkeeping questions, tax questions, auditing questions. And then based on that knowledge, we decide of, all right, whether we want to hire or not. There have been instances when we had people interview who said they had five years of experience with working in accounting firms in US and they did not know tax deadlines. So how do you overcome that? You are sitting in front of them and you are your question. There is a question of when is the due date to file a tax return, S Corp tax return? When is the due date to file the tax return? And the person, the, the interview, we left it blank. And I was like, how can you leave it blank if you have worked in an accounting firm for the last five years? And he goes, I don't know. I'm like, did you actually work? Can I talk to somebody there? And he said, and now I have no references there. So you could also come across with such things. So if you write something in your resume, make sure you have a story to tell that goes with it, not just putting something on there. It's not like you shouldn't include something, but have a story with it that you can at least talk and say of like, all right, I have put this in my resume. This is what I can talk about. Um, the next thing I did want to cover for a couple minutes was working with accountants in USA versus working with accountants in India. Um, and in that, I actually, I did give certain experiences of myself of working with accountants in US of how you work. Uh, if I may please ask Suchita Shah, CA Suchita Shah to give us a little brief about how is it about working with accountants in India. So here in India, we have different entities uh, for accounting. So to start with, there's a proprietorship firm, there's a partnership firm, there is HUF here, Hindu Undivided Family, uh, limited, uh, uh, like private limited company and public companies. So we follow different uh, standards for all, like for limited uh, companies and for private limited companies, we have ICI accounting standards, so we have to follow that. We have Companies Act. So on that basis, we do the accounting. For partnership, we have General Partnership Act. So on that basis, we do the accounting, how we have to distribute the profits to the partners, what are the taxation there. For proprietorship, it is casual. So on that basis, we have their approach to do the accounting. We have various softwares here. Like we are also, now QuickBooks is not there in India from tomorrow onwards. But we have Zoho books, we have Tally, uh, we have ERPs here. So we do our accounting in those softwares. Now there is, as for the companies like there is audit trail also required for that. So we have this new feature from 1st April 23 onwards. So this is the approach what we follow for our entities here in India. So like you said, right, QuickBooks is not available. QuickBooks is an online accounting program that you can yeah. access from anywhere. Is 
tally like that or they are still only the desktop version? It's still on the desktop version, but they have come with tally cloud. So from US also, we can have that accounting done. Okay. So they are moving towards the cloud based yes. or the online approach of, you know, you even if you are anywhere in the world, you can access your books and then work on Correct. it. Correct. But uh, you can see with QuickBooks right now, Zoho books are doing very good. It's similar to QuickBooks. So many uh, startup companies have moved to QuickBooks, uh, to yeah, Zoho, books. Zoho books. And it is like an online platform. It is same like QuickBooks, similar to QuickBooks. Okay, got it. So like Suchita said, right, for the different uh, entity types in India, in US, you ha in US also you have different entity types. Uh, based on the entity type, you have different taxes of how you are taxed at the federal level or whether it is a pass-through and the shareholders and partners pay taxes on their personal tax returns. Uh, so when you are working with a business entity, post-2017, there have been new tax laws, tax changes, where tax planning and accounting go hand in hand. There's a lot of tax planning to be done because there are a lot of entities that have different tax benefits. So depending on what type of entity they have set up, whether you want to change the tax type or no, whether you want to change the entity, whether you want to continue with their current uh, setup and how you want to change, what is the benefit? So there are certain calculations that you do. If you want to switch from like, one of the examples that I could say is if you want to switch from C Corp to S Corp, is it worth for the owners or the directors to switch from one entity type to the other? Is it going to be beneficial? So you do all the calculations, you talk to them, show it to them of, all right, this is the benefit that you will have. These are the tax advantages that the directors will have, whether it is beneficial for them. Are they looking to do it? What is the cost involved? You need to redraft all of your documents, your entity type, everything. So whether they are willing to spend the lawyer fees in setting all the documents up and changing everything. So based on those, like these are just little things. I'm not gonna talk much about this because I wanna talk more about the opportunities and how you can work and look for different opportunities in US. But this is just a little uh, introduction to US uh, entity types and how the taxes work there. Uh, and then now I wanted to talk back a little bit about individual taxes of how individual taxes work in India versus US. Individual taxes here in India. Mm -hmm. So like in so, US, sorry, so, before you start, yeah, yeah. let me say. So in US, when you file individual taxes, right, it depends on whether you are single, so you file a single tax return. If you are married, you'll file married filing jointly. If you are a head of household, if you are a single mom, you'll file as a head of household because you have yourself and your kid. So that's, those are the different types that you can file, but everybody files a tax return. So in India, I don't think you have those types, if I'm correct. Here, everybody is an individual entity, no joint accounts. So uh, each individual has their own PAN number. And uh, with the PAN number, we file the individual taxes here. So everybody, even if you're married, you will just file a separate tax return versus you file. So you, like in US, the tax rates are also separate for individual versus if you're filing a joint tax return. And you have a benefit of filing a joint tax return because you get higher income brackets, which is beneficial versus your like, so both husband and wife working will pay taxes at the same rate, correct? Right. And both of them have to file separate tax. Separate tax return. That's one thing they should change. <laughs> it's a partnership. <laughs> so coming back, uh, to working in the U.S. and how you can approach entities there or how you can work from here, right? Uh, like Praveen sir said, there are a lot of outsourcing opportunity that is currently in the growth of working from India. A lot of U.S. entities or a lot of U.K. entities are looking to set up their backup entities here. Their back offices are in India. One of the examples that I would like to give is one of the biggest companies in US, like the tax program, uh, CCH, Walters Kluwer, their back office is in India. So if you want to go and tap the market in US, the first thing maybe that might help a lot of people, like a lot of aspiring accountants, is to find an opportunity in India, work with a firm that is providing outsourcing services, or even multinational, big four, 
they have a lot of offices here that are doing us work not just us but uk like whichever country you are tapping into there are a lot of opportunities available here gain that experience for a year two years you'll get an exposure of how international market works how the taxes work in us or uk or any other country for that matter how accounting works in that country what opportunities you might be able to get if you want to move there once you talk about those things right like all right i have my niche of like you said you have your niche of working for financial statements so find there are a lot of outsourcing companies here especially like the big four they have a lot of back of uh, back offices here in india that provide those services maybe you could work with one of those companies gain that knowledge of how us reporting is done because even like the reporting for us the financials the financial statement itself is easy but the reporting is completely different in india versus us so if you have that added knowledge of working with an accounting firm here that does only outsourcing work or provides outsourcing services that could be an that could be an option for you to add to your resume and say all right i have this one year of experience i worked with a firm that i only did and i only worked on us taxes or i only worked on us accounting that could add value to your resume and give you an upper hand so even if you say you work here for one year and you are sitting your opponent who is going to be hired has 25 years of experience and you have one year or two years of experience doing the same thing you will have an advantage because you have that experience you have worked in that area currently that is what everybody is looking for whether you have given especially during post pandemic right like right now if you look at us market it is not the same as india the indian market is booming versus us market there are a lot of hiring freeze so if you want to cap come overcome the hiring freezes you will need to show you have that experience of why they should hire you even during hiring freeze so how do you overcome that either you have an added value of like a certification or you have that experience it's either or something that would add value to you something that has an upper hand or an added advantage what could be those things i would like to ask somebody to say you've been listening very interesting no the one yeah yeah so what do you think like you know what would be the added advantage of adding value whether you do a certification like say you have you've been working as an accountant for the last 20 years and you have an opportunity to move to the us like would you take that opportunity and why uh maybe i i may not move but i can give on the, uh, give the uh, services by sitting in india and uh, by hiring the people and uh, my expertise like uh, other uh, expertise will help that person uh, uh, to uh, means with the certification i can give other uh, services like or other um, uh my uh, experience will help uh, uh, the person at us to uh, be a good uh, this thing means uh, whatever he has difficulty i can uh, uh, give the solution for that right so yeah. like you said right you can sit here and you can help them yes. just having that added value is you have a certification or yeah. you have that experience to help them okay yes so, even if you have that opportunity to move to us doesn't mean all right somebody's offering me a job let me just move yeah you also have to evaluate of like is it worth moving there yes right because right now even with just getting a job opportunity the other thing in the us is the immigration yeah whether is whether it is worth, worth going going the there has to yes. look and then getting you get a work visa every 3 years you need to move you know you need the stamping renew your visa you spend all that money whether is it worth it whether you are able to find a company who is going to do it yes but if the company wants to save all that cost they might say you stay in india i'll pay you there at the us rate and you work for me from there so it would still be the same you are still working for a us company you still get that knowledge and exposure and experience that you are looking for the only difference is you are working in from india from your comfort zone versus moving to a completely different company uh, to a completely different country and going through the whole struggle of figuring out how to run a house 
especially for the younger generation it's like so easy here right like everything is I rem when I moved 10 years ago when I was home I was staying with my parents I don't remember entering my kitchen never in my life like I had never entered a kitchen to even make a cup of tea for me and then when I moved there I was like all right, now I need to go to the kitchen, figure out how to arrange everything, how to use everything. <laughs> everything was the first time, how to do laundry, where do I go to do laundry? How do you buy things? What things would, like what are essentials? You can prepare the tax returns. There are a lot of accounting firms that are looking to outsource or like, you know, they'll be like, all right, you prepare all these, you know, the basic preparation is done. And then you only need somebody in the US who's an accountant there who can file the tax return. Or you can also get a certificate here and then just file the tax returns from here. Yeah. So it's individual, like tax returns are not that complicated unless you're filing like multi-state tax returns or even for individuals if you're filing multi-states tax returns. But other than that, like one state, one job, one 1099, it's a very easy tax return that you can do from here and offer those services. Thank you. I also would love to ask you, the lady sitting right behind you, you seem very interested. <laughs> What's your experience and what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. tax returns or returns of uh, s corps or c corps so that's what we are looking at uh, getting into okay um we've done some preliminary uh, u.s tax course and uh, looking evaluating whether doing a cpa is essential or just having a ea certificate uh, should help us in getting uh, work outsourced from the U.S. So I think if you're looking only for taxation, even getting an EA certificate would help. So EA certification is an enrolled agent for who don't know. So enrolled agent is you are an enrolled agent with the IRS where you can file tax returns with the IRS. Yeah. CPA is you do the CPA, you get the license if you want to also do financial statements. Right, right. So, if, so what you're saying is if you want to handle only tax work, uh, it is not necessary to do a CPA and a EA certification should be good EA certification should help you. Like only for tax returns, EA certification helps. It's only when you want to do like bigger corporations, they might look for an accountant, whether you have the CPA or no. Okay. But basic tax returns, even for S Corp, C Corp individuals, like yeah. if you are an EA, it should help you. Thanks. No problem. So EA is, so that's another option that you have. You could get a certification for EA and then you can file the tax returns. If you want to do more, you want to work with an accounting firm, you do your CPA, you get the light. Getting a license is a whole another story of which state you want to get the license of, how many credits you have, whether you need to do how many years of experience the state needs and a couple of other things. Um, so I'll not get into those details because I don't know if how many of you would be interested in that. But just talking about tax returns, right? Like you said, you want to focus on preparing tax returns. She said she wants to focus on preparing tax returns. There are a lot of outsourcing forms here. Uh, like Windsor said, there are a lot of forms in Gujarat, Ahmedabad. There are forms in Mumbai as well that are offering all these outsourcing services. So to help with that, right? When you do, even if you do your CA, you do your CPA, you do your EA exams, or you do your accounting exam like CA in India, you have all the theoretical knowledge that is needed to get there. You have the degree, but when you actually step outside in the real world, things are different. How do you apply it? Like we are not taught how do you apply your theoretical knowledge into the practical world, unless you go out, you talk to people, you work with them, you are put in the field of like, all right, this is what you have to do. And you go through the whole process of how I can figure things out and how I will achieve what I want to achieve or how I will serve the client the way the client is looking to be served. Because if you're in a service industry, it's all about the client. What they are looking for is what you give. Being an accountant is a service industry. You have to serve the client the way they are looking for. You have to be available at their time, at their needs on when they want you to be there. 
so for the practical approach, right? Like when you do your theory, great, you have all the theoretical knowledge, but how do you apply it? Does anyone know how to read a general ledger and how to prepare journal entries from that? So if you are reading a general ledger, right? Like you said, everybody would know. So you are reading a general ledger. How do you find where, why your accounts payables are off or why your accounts receivable is off from your balance sheet? Uh, can you just uh, elaborate your question? So you have a general ledger in front of you. The client gave you a general ledger and he has your last year and you have the last his balance sheet and you have your current year balance sheet as well. But the balance on the balance sheet doesn't tie to your general ledger. How do you find that out? Or how do you explain the difference to the client? So you are saying that the balance sheet is not telling. The balance sheet is telling, but the balance on the balance sheet, the accounts payable balance on the balance sheet doesn't tie to the general ledger provided by the client. So generally you would use Excel uh, tools and uh, find out the differences. And then say you find a difference, right? Like usually they either they don't have the payables booked or something is missing. Some entries are not coded to the correct account. And then you fix. So you do the ledger scrutinies. I mean, generally you do the ledger scrutinies for that. And then what's the next step? Once you are done with the ledger scrutiny and then? Then you would find the missing entries and you need to pass there so that you can pass and you can tally the balance sheet. But, but what if the balance sheet is it's already tallied. Yeah. Then you do adjusting journal entries. I think he has something to say. Prince could also be because uh, of a bank reconciliation item. So we may have paid uh, a creditor, but uh, there may be on a cutoff date, there may be. There could be a couple of reasons, right? Like you said, like he said, that was one, that could be one of the reasons, the one thing that you said, and then you pass your journal entries. But 10 years ago, there was time when that was the first question that my boss asked me, do you know how to read a general ledger? And I was like, yeah, sure. I could read a general ledger. What am I looking for? And he's like, find me these 10 things from the general ledger. Where did the distributions go? How was it distributed to the partners? He didn't provide me with the balance sheet, but I had to find all those things only from the general ledger provided of what the current year distributions were or how am I closing the books for the last year? Like we feel like those were little things. Like I was like, oh yeah, I know general ledger. But then when I actually started going through the entire ledger to find the entries of, all right, this is the distribution. Where did the distribution go? Which partner received how much, whether it was in line with what they should have received. That was my challenge of figuring out of whether the distributions were correct or not. And the general ledger provided didn't have everything correct. So he was like, you have to figure it out and tell me how you will fix it. And I was like, all right, that's a challenge. <laughs> but it was a fun process. Um, but these days it's like, you know, everything is online. So it's very easy to find everything. Um, but ledger scrutiny was one of the things that as with experience, you learn it. But the first day on job would be difficult to figure out of like how you do a ledger scrutiny. With experience, you know, right, this is the ledger student. I know the 10 accounts, like now if I'm given a balance sheet, I know exactly which accounts to look at and find out of like, this is where it is missing. And these are the entries that you need to make. But if you don't know, like, you know, first day on job, how do you figure that out? And that was my first task that my boss gave me. And I was like, all right. I was like, so excited and so happy. It's an easy task. I just have to read a general ledger. How long will it take? And it took me the whole day of like, all right. These are the distribution accounts. This is the partnership agreement. This is how it should be. So if it's a first year in a company and this is how they provide you information, because if it's a first year, if it's a startup or like the first two years, many companies then have the funding of, you know, using an, a sophisticated program. So they were doing everything in Excel. So then with that Excel, how do you read the Excel? How do you make it readable that the client will also understand of what you want to tell them? whether they are able to read the balance sheet, if they ask you what my income statement was, what my bottom line number was, how do we prepare that and give it to them just from the entries that they are given? There's no ledger, it's just, just the bank statement that I have. 
but it was a fun chat it was a fun task it was a fun challenge and even these days like i have seen a lot of startup because there have been a lot of startups so they don't have the budget to do the quickbooks they'll spend the money to hire an accountant but they'll not spend the money to in the bookkeeping program or use that they'll save that money to do uh what's it called to hire resources or business development because the fun like the first two years they want to make sure they can get the business and then they can spend so they do a lot of things on excel and they go here this is the information to prepare a tax return what am i going to do with that it's just all numbers in excel it's their book it's their bank ledger of like all right this is all of my banking transactions prepare a tax return from this what do we do after that go ahead Of course, you have given a great tips around working with the outsourcing firms to really to get the experience, and maybe then you can explore getting business from US or uh, sitting here uh, providing services. Uh, not really going there and doing job, but sitting here and providing services, and possibly the firm would be happy to uh, uh, give you the opportunity. I've been also looking for some opportunities, or the expectation I have is what are the key uh, opportunities for Indian chartered accountants in US. Beating tax, audit, accountancy, business support, or anything. Uh, what are the pathways to reach there? A very high level, so that from a practical perspective, I can have certain clarity. Currently, I'm feeling a bit lost, but I know I'm noting down the key points which you are saying. But if I can have that kind of a structured uh, understanding, maybe separately or after the session, that would be great. So, say for a structured session, right? Like if I have done uh, my accounting here and I am looking to work only with taxation there, then you want to focus or find firms that would only do. And for taxation, it's not like, you know, all the tax, there are different tax programs available as well. So, you just need the basic tax knowledge what type of entities, how the tax filing is done, what the tax method is. Like I said, there's like, you know, different three levels of taxation. So if you find your niche of like, all right, this is the taxation. There is There are uh, certain taxation courses available as well that you can take. And also there's another, uh, like the practical based approach that I was talking about, right? So there are certain courses that offer only tax knowledge. So you take those courses and then you apply it for them. So, so basic... The basic knowledge that you need for taxation, different types of entities, tax filings, tax deadlines, you get that knowledge and then you can apply at different firms. And then say if you want to focus on banking, then there are certain banking courses available as well, depending on whether you want to do investment banking. Like I think Goldman Sachs, if you want to work there, you need, in India, you need a CA. In US, they are only hiring CPAs at higher level. So you need to give the CPA exam and then you can apply in that field. For auditing, if you want to do internal auditing, then there are internal auditing courses available. Financial planning, you get a, C, a CFP certificate and then you can apply there. So for like a defined structure, like I could do a one-on-one -on -one later, but like depending on what your niche is on where you want to focus, which area you want to focus, look up for a certificate for that, which will help you of like, all right, if I want to do taxation, like I just focus on taxes. What options are available that I can learn the practical taxation? Or like if I want to do bookkeeping, what bookkeeping opportunities that I might get? But the opportunities would depend on what knowledge you have. So for QuickBooks, you get a pro advisor, like, you know, you become a pro advisor, you take their courses, and then you can see, all right, you are a QuickBooks pro advisor, and then you can offer those services. Does that answer your question? No problem. Um, so depending on like, you know, once you find your niche, you want to look up for courses depending on whether you want to do banking, you want to do internal auditing, you want to do external auditing. There are a lot of courses available just for that. And as far as the practical coaching goes, right? Like I mentioned, you know, theoretically, you know everything. And then when it comes to practicality, there are a lot of different things that you actually need to learn and understand. So one of the things, like I think in my bio, it was mentioned that I am also a secretary of IGS, which is International Graduate Studies, which is a not-for-profit that only focuses on teaching. So they have come up with a program on practical coaching for accountants and practical coaching for outsourcing work. So the two different programs, they focus on teaching accounting for USA and taxation for USA. 
the courses will the so the courses focus on only the program of how US tax system works, the different tax levels there, what tax filings you need, different tax entities, or like the basic knowledge that you would need to find a job there is what the program focuses on. And it is designed especially for aspiring accountants or any account, like any accountant or any professional who's actually looking to move to US or like be in India and serve US clients. So that is the focus. And the purpose of the not-for-profit was to give back to the society from where we started. I started from ICAI. So we have started with accounting. And then after accounting, we'll move ahead with uh, other things of like system thinking and design approach, but that will be at a later stage. But the current focus is to help accountants because that's my forte, that's my goal, and that's our vision to help all the accountants with whatever they can find or like, you know, if they have any need, like accounting is such a vast field right now that one accountant can serve 100 different industries or 100 different fields. So how can we help them with that? So the practical knowledge that they need to get in the market or to tap the international market, that's the goal. Yes, the website is in the making. Uh, I got busy right coming, like right before I came to India, I was busy with my tax season there, but the website should be ready by May first week. So if you follow me on LinkedIn, you'll see the website there and I will also send it to you once it's ready. So by May first week, we should have everything ready. In what? Uh, none that we are aware of, that was the reason we started with this program. Like there are institutes and there are courses available, but they give you the theoretical knowledge. And the purpose of doing the practical knowledge was to help accountants. Like we did some outsourcing work and based on our experience, we built the whole program so that we know exactly how we can help the Indian accountants here. There are a lot of states, even if you go to California on the West Coast, California gives a lot of opportunities. Philadelphia has been giving a lot of opportunities as well. Every state is different, so it would depend on like what area you're focusing on, whether you're focusing like... So for taxation, it could be any state, it could be any firm that is looking to hire. So there's no specific state that would be like, all right, I have an accountant and I'm going to hire them because every state is different. Every state's requirement is different. Every state would have different number of accounting firms. So depending on like, you know, and especially like if you want to move from here, you might also want to be closer to if you have friends and family there, then you want to look into state in those states or around those states so that you have that support. Uh, yes, they're still there. There's only like four or five states that still recognize CA to do the CPA exam. And then to get the credits for the CPA license, either you need, you need 150 credits. Like for New York, you need 150 credits. So you would either need to do a master's or you do an MCOM here and then get those additional credits. And then you can apply for the license. So like for Indian CAs, California recognizes Indian CAs. Uh, but again, like if you want to go to the West Coast, then California is one of the options. Uh, New York, on the East Coast, there aren't any states that recognize. Yeah. I am licensed in New York. So that would depend on what the rules are 10 years later. So like I started, I did my CPA in 2010 and then I started working and I applied for my license. But I had to do my master's because I didn't do uh, MCOM here. So then I had to do my master's there and then get additional credits to get to do 150 credits. Because I wanted, because I was in New York, I only wanted New York license. And also uh, that was my dream to get a New York license and be in New York. So I wanted to follow it and chase it no matter how difficult it was. So you need, for New York, it is 150 credits. Even for New Jersey, it is 150 credits. Uh, 
all the states are looking for outsourcing opportunities. Like if they can find an office in India or there's another country's Philippines. So India is like the major one because uh, Walters Kluwer opened their back office here. So a lot of accounting firms are focusing on opening their back office or having a support team in India. So outsourcing work that way is going to increase for the next five years here. So that would uh, actually depend on how and which firm you are working for, whether the firm wants you to work during their hours or they want you to work during your hours. And then maybe like, you know, in the evening, you have one or two hours when you meet and then you review the work. So every firm, is every firm is different. Like for me, when I started working here, like I have a team here in India. So they work during their time. I just meet with them once a week in the evening. And then we just have a time set up so that way it's not too late for India. So it's not too early for India. So every firm is looking like for different, like I know my friend's firm, like they only want their Indian team to work during the US hours. So then for them, like it was, initially it was very challenging to find a team that would work like throughout the night for them. So it's like every state is different. Like I don't have an exact answer of like, look for XYZ firm in XYZ state, because every state is different. Every state requirements, every firm's requirements are different of what they're looking for what the size of the firm is, what clientele they have, whether the client would need response in the evening or whether like, you know, they, whether they need responses immediately or they are okay waiting 24 hours. There are a lot of firms that are looking for outside. I think like if you constantly check on LinkedIn, like Walter Sloan had put a big, a big article on LinkedIn that they were opening their back office in India for outsourcing work. And there are a lot of accounting firms in India that provide outsourcing work. So you can also just look for those firms. Uh, from USA, so you have to first check of like which state you can uh, register with to take the CPA exam, because there are only few states who recognize Indian CA as a credit, like they'll give you the credits for that. And then based on that, you can just, and it's, like if you want to do that, like there are CPA classes here that would actually have like firsthand knowledge and the latest knowledge on which uh, states are taking Indian CAs and they're giving credits for that. I'm done with the presentation. So yeah, 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 it's open. We can continue with the question. Can I ask a question now? Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, once a person is a CA and a CPA, yeah. So uh, you know, what what uh, services can you provide? In the sense, what are the margins for the typical services? Supposing accounting, auditing, you know, taxation, diligence. The forensic, which which should he focus on? Which are the high margin businesses? Second, you know, what is for a, for I mean, a startup like yourself, you know, uh, what is the fixed cost that that goes in, you know, for, uh, for a business? So the fixed cost for a business would depend on whether you are working from here, you have your own office, you don't have your own office, you have the liberty of working from home, then there is no fixed cost. Like you're working from home, you can start from there. And then once you grow, you build your clientele, and then you can move and open an office. So in fixed cost, it would depend on like, you know, whether you want to start with one person, whether you want to start with a team of four people or five people. So depending on how you want to start, based on that, your fixed cost will depend. And then for the niche that you asked about, right, like which is the high margin, again, like that would depend on what pricing are you willing to offer? What your margin is versus what my margin would be? It, it might be different. It could be the same. It could be higher. It could be lower. Like for me, like when I started, my margins were too low because I wanted to tap the industry. I wanted to build my clientele. So I kept the margins low. Start. I started with accounting. So I did tax services and bookkeeping. So that way I built the clientele and then I can add other services. I wanted to ask a question about the CPA exam. Uh, would you recommend doing it through, uh, you know, joining these classes, which are, you know, now providing, uh, you know, services to students 
the teaching uh, of, of each subject or doing it by, via self-study. I'm not sure an option of self-study is available in India, but I'm just, I'm not sure, but I'm just uh, wondering if you know about it. Um, so that's a tough question for me because based on what I have recently seen in students here, right? Like if they go to a class, they have a dedicated schedule of these are your class timings, you go there, you do it and they'll do it. But like, I haven't seen a lot of self-study where people are like, all right, like, especially like for me, like 10 years later, when I was talking, when I did my classes, I did it through one of the classes in India. And I was, I'm still in touch with them. Every time I visit India, I go see the professors and everyone there. So when I was talking to them, they were like, you know, students come and they go, like they miss the classes, they do the recording because now the classes are online. So they don't see the same level of interest that was there when 10 years, 15 years ago. So it would depend on how motivated you are. So it's all about your motivation and determination of, all right, I want to complete it in X number of months or X number of years. For me, my determination was the classes were six months. It was every Sunday. I completed the classes. I think like June 1st week, my classes ended. And then June 3rd week, I flew to US to give the exams. So I wanted to complete it within that one year. I wanted, I stayed there for six months, gave my exams, one exam each month. But I was determined on like, all right, I wanted to do it. Like, this is my goal. This is my dream. I have to do it no matter what. And I'll do it. So if you know, like, you know, if self-study, like if you're working and you decide if you want to do self-study and give the exams, will you be able to manage your time? Do you have the time to put in? Will you be able to take out time from the work? Do your office people know of like, all right, you are also working. So they are supportive of the hours that you might not be available or like every day you say two hours, I'll work one hour less so that you've given that time to study. So those are the factors that it would depend on. I give the same thing. One of my cousin is also doing it. So she was asked, she asked me the same question right before, like last year she started and I was like, it depends on like, you know, what work you are doing. And she's in investment banking. So for her, it was like, Right now, they have cut down so much on the manpower that one person is doing the job of five people. So she's like, I don't have that time for self-study. So we set up a schedule where she comes visits me so that that's her class time and then she'll study at the same time. Uh, I have a question for Pravinji. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, Pravinji, uh, we are a mid-sized CA firm in Mumbai and we do no. accounting and tax work for Indian corporates. Uh, we are looking to target uh, U.S. Uh, companies. Uh, as you rightly said, there are good opportunities for uh, you know uh, India to do U.S. accounting. So uh, we tried with uh, uh, Commercial Trade Office of uh, India, U.S., uh, which sits in the U.S. Embassy. But I mm -hmm. think uh, their view is that you know U.S. Uh, they are more U.S. pro. I feel that you know uh, they don't want uh, outsourcing to be done in India. Or uh, we also tried some uh, IACC and all, but uh, I don't think you know uh, we were able to uh, target, or we were look, we were able to get the right target audience. So uh, you know, uh, is I mean, do you see that there are some CPA firms in US uh, who are short of uh, labor and they want to outsource their work to India? And if so, uh, how do we get in touch with them? So uh, there are a couple of ways, uh, like there are uh, many online uh, is available where you can upwork and uh, many other, you can try that uh, uh, to register there and then put your uh, uh, profile and then you can do the, uh, from the LinkedIn or any contact, you can try to get work uh, with them like uh, we both having a, a CPA firm, so we can also, uh, like we have already decided to whom we should give, but many other CPA firms also is looking for. So uh, it's, uh, it's a hard work, like many of uh, Pune company and uh, uh, Ahmedabad based company, Bangalore based companies, they are doing the work. So it, it takes time, uh, biggest, challenge in uh, outsourcing work is the trust the environment in us the trust base uh, thing of india is very less like i tell you in one simple example that 
if a new client come in the US, if they call to uh, uh, my company or any company, they ask first question, are you taking a new client? That's the culture in United States. In India, I can ask any C CA firm, like, are you ready to take my work? Everyone is ready. So because they take the work and they are not able to deliver it. So uh, in US, if I want to take a new client, I want to make sure that what is his expectation and I should follow that. So biggest challenge for US companies, US CPA firms, US uh, want to do the outsourcing work. They, the biggest challenge is the trust because the mentality and the culture we grew up in India is totally different. Uh, you can see the same concept from the Indian uh, authorities, tax laws, regulation. They think that everyone is a cheater and that they create a law according to that, uh, based on that assumptions. But in US, IRS trusts everyone. You, you, they trust uh, uh, so much on you that like whatever you say is that they accept it. But once they found that, oh, there is some problem, then they go in deep and then they screw to the client. So that's the mentality that trust level is there. Uh, so if you create an environment, you pitch uh, nicely written your hard work knowledge that you have this niche area as uh, she mentioned uh, that what expertise you have and you have to work hard and then suddenly you will get, you can approach any CPA because we sitting in the US is getting every day one or two email or LinkedIn request and things. So you have to dis think that like we are getting every day. So how you are differentiate with others, uh, you can create a case study, you can create an uh, article and then you present themselves like this is my thing. I have available three people who are CPA or you can do your CPA credential and then give your time like, hey, I'm available on this certain uh, time. I'm available, I can build the team. If anyone get a confidence on you, uh, then the sky is the limit. So biggest hurdle is to trust the US counterpart and the US counterpart trust on you. That is the gap. There is a no way the institute is also not helping uh, where if anyone is doing any uh, unethical work, they should debar from membership. If that confidence comes or the institute say that like, hey, my member is trustworthy, you can rely on it. Millions of millions of dollar work will come immediately. But the biggest challenge in the Indian court system is very bad. Uh, if any sue is here, then you can retire. It still will, will not uh, resolve 30 years, 20 years easily in one case. So, and it, it's no system. That's why no accounting firm is available uh, and saleable. But in US, the law is so strong that all CPA firms are uh, available for, uh, like they have a market value. It's very open, very simplest thing. So that trust is and the law is the biggest challenge. You can try and try and then you will get success. Many is, uh, Pune based companies and the Amdavad based companies are getting the work. It's a humongous work, but you, you have to work and hard and then you will get. Thank you. Maybe, you know, uh, the Institute can, uh, with the help of US chapter, we have US chapter. Maybe if you can act as an aggregator, you can have a portal where, you know, the US CPAs can know, we can apply like it's like a recruitment portal where, you know, individuals or uh, firms from India, they can. That is going to be happen. But again, the US, as I mentioned, is a very law uh, and we all are afraid to, they can sue us. Like uh, the institute started a portal, somebody gave work to you and you screwed up them. And then they, this US company sued to the institute or any portal then. So nobody wants to take that risk. And it's very hard. Uh, that's like, nobody wants to take any reference even though they would like to encourage. 
so there there is a limitation on that aspect there is uh, we can't take the work without the insurance we have a professional insurance uh, systems so it's totally different uh, in that aspect so but things are moving very fast the us all uh, like about 15 years ago to get a work from india to get the permission uh, from the client that i'm getting work from india it's like uh, you ask for 1000 people 1000 clients then one or two five is agreed now the american firms american clients because they have in the, after covid they don't have the resources in us so at least they can get the work done from india so they are coming they are very open so now almost 50 percent chances are the clients are agree okay you get the work but you should control the privacy data uh, because india has a very uh, they are selling the information uh, freely so that's again biggest challenge of the privacy and security of the data so there are so many challenges if if we can find the solution on that then they absolutely the no problem i think toral can also uh, give her uh, two cent on this I think I agree with what you said. The one thing based on my 10 years experience versus his is 25. He's been way longer experienced than me. Um, but like you said, you find your niche and to find our target audience from US. One thing like I also mentioned earlier is to have your pitch ready, have a presentation, have your pitch, focus on one area at a time, and then you'll be able to target the correct audience. But if you are trying to focus on everything at once, like I want to do bookkeeping, I want to do tax work, I'll do your financial statements. If you will try to focus on everything together, the accounting firms there might not want to work with you because the first thing that will come to their mind is he's not going to have the manpower to do it and he doesn't have the capability to do it because he doesn't have a CPA. So if you only focus on one area, like you only want to do tax work, only focus on tax work, get that knowledge, and then you have your pitch. Like the client gives you one minute two minutes stops to be able to pitch yourself if you are able to get clients attention then you'll get the next 30 minutes to talk about it but the first 30 60 seconds to 90 seconds is when you want to use the correct terminology if you're focusing on tax work like what tax work are you focusing on look up for the tax terms and that will help you yeah biggest uh, uh, thing is also here like in tax individual tax there is uh, like uh, Praveen Jain or Toral is uh, like we at least 100 Praveen Jain is required. So here what we are thinking that, oh, I'll take the accounting work, I'll take the individual tax, I'll take the business tax, I'll do the financial analysis, I'll do this and that. It is impossible because the US has a humongous market. So if you focus on one and then you specialize in one only like uh, you do the real estate uh, accounting work. That's it. Like in Jaipur, there is a one NAB. They are doing the accounting work for the hedge fund accounting. That's it. They can't go any other things. Like uh, in one area, you need a thousand CPA or so. And you are a one person. I am a one person. I can't handle like there is a 24 hours and I can work on a 8, 10 or 12 hours. Uh, that's it. So th that's mentality of doing this, 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 so many things, it's, it's will kill you. You have to focus on one area, one item, and then do the best. Hi, uh, so my question is, what exactly is the scope of in the US when it comes to internal audit specific uh, to the insurance sector? Uh, sector? And even if I have to uh, maybe narrow it down to the general insurance uh, sector. And what all, uh, if at all, any certifications that I can do. So I'll just give a background. So I'm working with Tata AIG within the internal audit department, worked with ICIC Lombard. So my current niche is specific to general insurance only. So that is what I'm looking at when it comes to uh, US markets. If at all, say if I, if I want to move over there. So if at all any certification other than CA is required when we talk about to this particular sector. 
So there are certain insurance certifications that are available. I don't know the specifics, um, but there are insurance certifications. So there are certain insurance exams that you can give so that the client feels like you have the US knowledge to be able to provide or talk to them about insurance. Uh, but without that, they'll not talk. Like if a client comes and asks me about insurance, they'll ask me like, do you have experience in that? And I'm like, no, my experience is only with accounting and taxation. So they'll not talk to me about it. But there are certain certifications available just for insurance that you can focus on and then look for jobs in that field. Again, uh, I think uh, the biggest challenge is uh, the like uh, when we want to take the uh, or any CPA firm wants to take an audit for the insurance, then you need to have the uh, professional insurance. So to get this, uh, uh, basically the insurance is a big uh, company. So there is no individual or a small medium size uh, uh, CPA firm will not get such type of work. The way your profile uh, speaks that you can go only the top like big four companies, they are the auditor of, uh, or the big 50, uh, 25 or 50 companies of the United States uh, CPA firms. Those are your target uh, things. So you can approach them and then uh, they can apply for the H1B visa or the other advantage, but the way I see the people are moving to US is just do some uh, accounting or uh, some other uh, in the university and then you will get the OPT three years or two years or one year uh, uh, authorized to work in the United States. Try that and then you will get the uh, H-1B visa. Otherwise, second chance is you have to work in the AIG or any other in their Indian office and then take a L-1 transfer there. So that's the only way you can do it. Uh, only the big four uh, has, I believe, I'm sure that the big four has their uh, auditors and they have a back office in US, uh, India. So you can, uh, all, all big four or big 10 companies have offices in India. It's called service delivery center or different, different, uh, they are having the name for that. So you can apply there and you can get into that. That's the only way you can do. Otherwise, you have to change your career path. Uh, the experience you had is, is required to a very big company, like company like me and Torals is a very small, five, 10 people, 15 people. So we, we are not even interested to take and we can't take. The, the liability is so high uh, and the insurance premium will be, we have to pay. Uh, to take that type of assignment is not uh, worth for uh, us uh, because the cost is higher. We will not get the work. We don't know uh, with the big companies. So that's the challenge is there. So you should target to get with the big four through or big uh, insurance company directly as an employee. Um, hi, sorry. So I think so I partially answered my question, but uh, so I just wanted to uh, check how exactly to land a job in US because my current situation is that I'm on H4 in New Jersey. And uh, so uh, basically, you know, I have just enrolled for CPA right now. And uh, so again, you know, the EAD and uh, I getting I-140 and then EAD through my husband's visa is going to take a long time. Uh, let's say like 18 months or so. So uh, meanwhile, I'll be doing CPA, but then how exactly to, uh, or if there are any other alternatives, uh, you know, besides uh, waiting for an I-140? Yeah, this is a very unfortunate part in the United States where, the, where you can do business in US from sitting in India, but unfortunately H-4 is... Uh, is uh, like uh, they don't like it or whatever the reason is due to the immigration you can't work there even you can't work for india work sitting in the us it's a very weird law they are very friendly nation for business not for the h4 people so the best part is instead of uh, like cpa is, is very easy if you are a ca uh, it's like 5% uh, efforts is required. So CPA is nothing. If you are a qualified CA, you can do it. It's just a matter of time. Uh, but 
to get the work there, it's better to convert your visa to F1. You should join some university, then get OPT. So at least two, three years, you can work there and then you have a good work experience and then H1 people can apply or meanwhile, you can, uh, your husband EAD can come and then you can work. And uh, hopefully, uh, due to this uh, new administration, they are very lenient to the H4. So you will be able to get some law change or something. So finger cross. Uh, but best way is to do some uh, university courses and get the OPT uh, things. Otherwise, uh, yeah, many IITNs, MBAs, Harvard MBA, they, in H4, they are just sitting there and not doing anything because they are not permitted to work in the United States. That's the biggest challenge. for uh, individuals and say small size firm in the USA, how easy or difficult it is? Like there is a lot of saturation, it's difficult to find new work or uh, you can, you know, uh, so after you put some effort, it's manageable. I mean, how, um, how it would work? A lot of efforts, a lot of networking, a uh, lot of networking because there is a, there is they have reached a saturation point where there are a lot of firms available there are a lot of accountants available so it is very easy for them like their pricing wise also like your margin has to be to enter the market your margins have to be too low to actually set up your firm and then depending on what visa you are you you might not be able to set up your own firm but you might be able to partner with a small accounting firm so you can partner with them, bring in your own clientele, and then start from there. Uh, but just like directly, you do your CPA, you get your license, and then you say you want to open your firm and start working. It might not be that easy because networking takes a, like a lot of toll on you to just go and talk to people. Like every day, you might want to look up for events and market yourself. Of you know, I'm an accountant. I just started my firm. Here is my firm, and I offer X Y Z services. Even though if you're just doing tax work, like there are a lot of options available. So the competition will be like, if you want to start like a small firm, the competition is h &R Block. Like that's one of the big firms. So there are people who are moving out from there and they want an accountant so that they have somebody throughout the year to talk to. But that's where you'll have to start. So that will be your competition if you're starting new. Okay. And as for visa, can you apply for a business visa if you're starting your own firm? Is You can. Uh, you can apply for your visa, um, but there's a whole process for that. So you need to have X dollars in your bank account right, and then yeah. go through the whole paperwork. But there is an option. You can do that. Thank you. Yeah, business visa, you can do the business, but you cannot work there. <laughs> it's uh, uh, like you go and meeting, do and then get work done from India. That's possible. And that's why, like you can buy a CPA from there. You can run that uh, remotely. That's That's possible, but uh, going there and work there, that's prohibited. So you have to hire a local authorized people or then you have to change uh, your visa status from B1, B2 to L1 or many other ways. If you are very smart, then you can take the O1 visa also. That also possible. And all, all lawyers gain. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. And I think he's going to give the closing speech. Got it. Uh, do we have any more questions? Anyone? Okay, I think uh, recognizing presence of uh, C.A. Rajkumar Adukya Ji, our uh, Central Council member. Thank you so much, sir, for gracing the occasion. Thank you so much. I think that was an excellent... Uh, session on opportunities or Indian CAs in USA. Uh, thank you, CA Toral Gathani, ma'am, uh, for present being present and guiding us. Uh, thank you, Praveen Jain, sir, uh, for accepting our invitation to be available at such a short notice. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we, we reached out to him yesterday, and so was ready to be there. Thank you so much, Praveen ji. Uh, 
Uh, just to let you know, uh, we at WRC, once again at the International Trade Services and the WTO Committee, are planning to do a lot of such uh, collaboration uh, sessions across the different chapters of the Institute. Uh, so we reached out to Praveen Sir, who has been the immediate past chairman with the Washington DC chapter of the US. Uh, we're planning to, uh, under a series that will be soon announced, and we're planning to put up a lot of sessions, collaborative sessions for across India, uh, across the globe with different chapters of the ICI. So looking forward to seeing all of you in all of those as well. Thank you so much, the audience, for coming here and participating. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Aditya Ji. We we'll just uh, request ma'am for a picture of once again with the memento. I'll request Adukia sir also to please join in on the desk. Suresh ji, please join in. Thank you so much, Suresh sir. Thank you. Um, like I, thank you. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for giving your time and opportunity for opportunity to me to speak about the opportunities in US on how to work. Feel free to connect with me in LinkedIn uh, to if you want to talk more, if you want to look for other options and any other consulting work that you need. Just feel free to talk and reach out. Um, and a special thanks to he's not here right now, but I wanted to uh, thank uh, CA Milan Shah. Milan Chitalia for giving me this opportunity and making the connection to give me this option and opportunity to speak here in front of all the accountants. So thank you, Milan, wherever he, he's home right now, but thank you, Suchita, as well for the opportunity. And thank you to the entire WIRC team for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toralji. And thank you, everyone, and seeing you in the next program. Signing off, Rudyesh Khania. Thank you so much.